I've had Home Assistant running for going on two years now. It was a worryingly easy process to set up, so when I came to install Hass on the Zima board I reviewed recently, I figured, no worries, I got this. Boy, was I wrong. It turns out that if you aren't using a Raspberry Pi or running Home Assistant OS in a VM using one of the supplied VM images, it is a heinously painful experience to try and install this. So in an effort to spare you the pain I dealt with, here's how you do it. If you're going to run this on a Pi, it's so simple. Download the Raspberry Pi imager, select your board type, Home Assistant OS from the OS list, and your microSD card, and then just hit go. Plug your card into the Pi, power it on, connect Ethernet, and wait like 10 minutes, and you'll get the Home Assistant dashboard at homeassistant.local, and then you're ready to actually do the setup of Haas, which itself is a relatively simple process too. No problems there. If you're happy to run it in a VM like I do, download the VM image of choice. I went with the KVM image to run in Unraid, and then just boot it up and again you're pretty much ready to go. If you want to use neither of those things, this is where it gets fun. Now, you do have the option to just run Home Assistant in a Docker container, but the problem with that uh, sort of root is that you can't use add-ons. That's a pretty big deal. Things like Influx, Grafana, WireGuard, Node-RED, and even the Silicon Labs multi-protocol add-on are all off the table. You really don't want to do it that way. You can run what they call Home Assistant Supervised, but they sure make it sound like that's not an appealing option. So we're left with the last option, installing HAOS onto a system as its primary operating system. Well, shouldn't be that hard, right? I've installed tens of operating systems on hundreds of machines. I know what I'm doing. I'll just stick the ISO on my Ventoy USB stick and boot from that. Right, let me find the ISO file. Uh, this is their installation page. We want generic x86-64, so Intel NUC, that's a thing. Let's find. Let's have a look through. BIOS settings, sure. Where is the files? No, that's all like setting up. Maybe it's on the GitHub then. Uh, releases. Uh, wow, there are 42 assets. I think uh, we should find it here. Uh, we want the generic one, uh, image.xz, RUCB. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. Let me control F and ISO. Ah, no results. There just isn't an ISO? Okay, yeah. There's no ISO file. How they actually want you to do it is a marvel of convoluted idiocy that I'm genuinely impressed. Also, can I take one minute to call out the sheer arrogance and elitism that permeates any Linux or Linux adjacent space? Naturally, confused at my inability to find an ISO file, and somewhat hopeful that at least there is a community developed version somewhere on the internet, I googled Home Assistant OS ISO. The very top result was a Reddit thread asking the r slash Home Assistant community if such an ISO existed. The top most comment and the top most reply to that comment are frankly an insane elitist patronizing response. They essentially argue that if not having the industry standard method for installing an operating system is too much of a challenge for a beginner, they just shouldn't use Home Assistant and should give up. This is an insufferable position that frankly pisses me off. I'm no noob. I've been running Haas for two years. I've written a Home Assistant discovery via MQTT function for Pimeroni's Enviro boards. I manufacture my own electronics hardware and write all of the software for it. I generally know what I'm doing when it comes to tech. But this install process, for anything other than clearly the preferred methods, is so brain raw that it broke me. 
To say that I should give up because running Home Assistant is hard, installing is the easiest step, is vile. But beyond ease, there are plenty of other reasons why I expect Nabucasa to offer an ISO version of the operating system or the installer. But these gatekeepers decided that none of that matters because they figured it out which makes them smarter than you. God, they're so insufferable. All right, ran it over. Here is the install process. Use your favorite bootable USB flasher of choice. I do genuinely recommend Ventoy, by the way. You burn Ventoy with something like Rufus or Etcher, and then just drag and drop your ISO files that you want to be able to boot from onto the drive. And then when you actually boot from the USB stick, you get an options list with all of those ISOs. And then you just pick which one you want to boot from and away you go. So use whatever tool you want uh, to burn Ubuntu onto a USB stick. Plug that USB stick into the system you want to install HAOS onto, a Zima board, an Intel NUC, or even just an old desktop, and boot into Ubuntu. Use the Try Ubuntu option to use it as a live USB, and then open Terminal and copy and paste these commands into Terminal and run them. I'll put them in the description for you, and I'll also leave a short link to this video so that you can easily get to it from a fresher live USB where you don't otherwise have files available. Then open Firefox and download the latest stable release of Belina Etcher. Open it with the software installer, install it, and then open it. Next, head to Home Assistant's GitHub repo and copy the link to the latest version of the HAOS underscore generic dash x86 dash 64 img.xz file. Paste that into Etcher, select your internal drive as the drive to boot into, uh, and uncheck your bootable USB stick, and then hit go. If all goes well, you've now written HAOS to the internal drive. You can shut down Ubuntu and boot into Home Assistant. You might run into some issues with Etcher though, as apparently it doesn't like writing to ext4 partitions. So if you had, say, Ubuntu or Debian installed previously on that machine or drive, it might break it. And in our case, we think it broke our partitions on the drive too, so that we couldn't install Proxmox instead. For this demo for this video, I tried deleting all of the partitions on the drive I was using, using gparted, and then created an unformatted volume on the disk to avoid any file system issues. I also found out that actually, for doing this video, that the flash from URL option is broken. So you'll have to actually download a copy of that img.xz file first, and then pick flash from file, and then select the file. It, that did work for me, that, that made it work, so feel free to give that one a shot. Also, as a note to the Etcher team, there's a good chance that the reason this fails is because GitHub now requires you to supply a user or agent header for any get response requests. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Etcher doesn't add that header when it does its requests. Just a thought. As it stands, that is how you set up Home Assistant using what is clearly the non-standard route. While I can see why it is non-standard, Home Assistant is a pretty lightweight sort of operating system or, or task to do, so unless you're running it on a Pi, you're probably wasting your hardware by installing it bare metal like I've just described, and you would be better off running it in a VM with something like Proxmox or TrueNAS or Unraid underneath. That still doesn't mean that this should be as painful as it is though. I'd love to see uh, if you know someone with a bit more free time and experience than me could write an installer for Nabucasa so they can finally let you install their operating system like everyone else on the goddamn planet does. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments or on our Discord server linked in the description. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to check out my own, you know, uh, hardware that I make, uh, that's osrtt.com. There's also a load of other videos, including the full Smart Home series playlist on the end cards, if you want to check it out and learn more about Home Assistant and all of the awesome things you can do with it. And yeah, I hope that's uh, helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.